my name is John, and within the next 10 minutes, you're gonna learn how to create an API within Umbraco CMS. So the topics I'm gonna to cover are the Umbraco API controller. We're gonna go over an example using a post and a get request. I'm gonna cover a tool to help you test your endpoints to make sure they're working. We're also gonna go over attribute routing, and using this, we can create more user-friendly API URLs, and the benefit of this is it's gonna be a little bit more secure. And we're gonna do all of this building a very stupid example and it's called the insult API. So as you can see right here, we have a very grumpy looking dog and right at the bottom, we have an insult. So we're gonna create a simple endpoint that whenever we call it, it just gives us a random insult. This is episode three within the series of how to build a website using Umbraco V8. If you wanna learn more, then hit subscribe now. We are now gonna create a very basic API with two endpoints. One which is just going to return a ball, which we call is up, and the next is going to be called mug me off. And mug me off is going to be the thing that we're going to expand on later. So to create a controller, it's the same as anything else. Go to our controller folder, go to add controller. In here, we want to go to empty, click on add. Now, in this little dialog, I'm going to call mine my API controller, and I'm going to click OK. As you can see, We've got the skeleton of a default vanilla MVC controller. What we're going to do is get rid of this and call a uh, Umbraco API controller. As you can see, the using has been automatically added up here. So we have Umbraco Web Web API. Now let's get rid of this because we don't want it anymore. And what we want to do is have public all is up. Now I normally create an is up method whenever I'm doing a new API just because it makes testing much easier. And I'm going to do return true. And if I, there we go. Now that's basically the basis of creating a post API endpoint. If we want to create a get API endpoint, we do HTTP get. And we just do public. I'm going to call this one string. I'm going to call this mug me off. And then in here, I'm just going to do a return. We have two endpoints, but how do we access them? What are the URLs? Let's cover that quickly. Okay, so when we're using the Umbraco API controller, we have to prefix all of our URLs with Umbraco slash API. So let's quickly type that out, Umbraco slash API. Now, this is basically how we bypass having to create custom routes or doing any clever configuration. We just inherit Umbraco API controller, and as long as we prefix our APIs, we should be good. So in this example, because my API controller is called my API, the next part of my segment is going to be my API, and the endpoint is called is up. So that's is up, and that is my URL for my is up. Now the mug me off is exactly the same because we're going from the Umbraco API controller Umbraco slash API. Next is going to be my API and mug me off. And that's the URLs explained. We now have a very simple API with two endpoints. What we want to do now is test that the API is actually working. And the easiest way of doing this is using Postman. To download Postman, just go to Google, type in Postman. From here, you can see we have this download Postman link. From here, we just do download the app. In here, I'm using Windows 64. Click that, get an installer, double click on it a few times. You'll have it installed, job done. To test that our API is working as expected, open up Postman. What we're gonna do is click on the new tab. In our enter request URL, we're gonna start by adding in our host name. And for me, that is local. Now, because we're using the default Umbraco API, we're gonna to have to prefix our API request with Umbraco slash API. The name of my API is my API. And my endpoint is mug me off. Now, when we do this, we should get a random insult returned to us. So let's see what happens when I click send. And down the bottom, what we can see is we have the word idiot back. Perfect, we've validated that our API is working. If you do not want to use the default URL that the Umbraco API controller forces you to use, then we can pimp things up using MVC attribute routing. 
To return an insult, we're going to be using this pre-existing get insults method that I've created. If we have a look in here, we have an array. It's containing a load of insults that I've come up with. Right down the bottom, it's using a random next insult length. So what happens is whenever we call this API, we're going to get a random insult. To create our new insults API, we start by creating a public method within our controller. So public. The API is going to be returning a string, our insult, and the name of our API doesn't really make a difference. We're going to be using attribute routing, which will overwrite this in a bit. And what we're going to do is return our get insults. Perfect. Now to create our custom API URL, we are going to use the route attribute. And when we're using route, we're going to have to do a custom route. And we want to call this API slash get insult. Amazing. Now, one word of caution, and this catches me out all the time, is that if we have a look at our route here and go up to our namespace, you can see that nothing's complaining and we're using the system web MVC namespace. Now, if we compile our project and try to access the API, we will get a 404. And that is because there's two route attributes within the .NET framework. And when we're working with APIs, the one that we actually want to use is the one in the HTTP namespace. So do not forget to do this because your API will not work otherwise. Out of the box, attribute routing is disabled within Umbraco. And to enable it, we'll need to create ourselves a component and then we'll need to register that component when Umbraco starts. So let's do that now. To create our Umbraco component, we will need to create a class. Now you can create your class anywhere you want to. I'm going to do it in this code folder. So quickly add class. Now from here, I'm going to call it uh, register settings. You can call this anything you want to. It doesn't really make a difference. Now the important thing is we want to have this as an I component. As you can see, we have a system component model. We do not want to use that. Things will go wrong. So do we want to use the Umbraco core composing? Now that we have this, we can implement the interface. And in our initialization, what we can do is have a global settings or global configuration. Global configuration. And here we have configuration. And then here we should have something called map HTTP attribute routes. And this will enable attribute routing within our application. Now the next thing we need to do is make sure that this component is run when Umbraco is first loaded. So let's do that now. Next up, we are gonna create our composer. Now the official Umbraco documentation says a composer is a way to curate functionality within Umbraco. Now that's a bit of a fancy term, Simply, the composer is a way to register your components on application start, meaning we create our composer and then we'll be able to have our attribute routing setting enabled and working when the application starts. Curating functionality, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a designer. So what we're gonna do is create ourselves a class. Class name can be anything, doesn't make a difference. So I'm gonna call mine, my composer. Now I'm going to implement the iUser Composer. And what we're going to do is implement that interface. Within here, you can see we have this composition parameter being passed in. So we're going to use that. So composition, now we've got components, and then we're going to uh, append. So we're going to add in a new component. That's going to be our register settings component. And boom, that is our composer done. For those of you who are playing along at home, I will go over the Angry Dog page. So everything's in line, as you can see. Don't judge me about coding standards. Don't really care. I've also done everything on the home page just because I'm being lazy. If you want to do this yourself, knock yourself out by creating your own document type. Now, the first thing we can see on the page is some CSS, and this is going to create the video background and have an overlay of the Angry Dog and the insult. Underneath that, we have our HTML. We've only got really three main elements, one which is a video, one which is an image, and one which is the placeholder for the insult. Now, as you can see, these images are not within the CMS itself. If you wanted to make this dynamic, you could put the images via the media library and then use the Umbraco helper to make this all dynamic. But, you know, to keep it simple, I haven't. 
This is the JavaScript that is calling the API. The URL that we're using is the friendly URL that we created earlier, which is API get results. This completely masks that we're using Umbraco, so security wise, this is much better than just using the default Umbraco routes. Looking at the JavaScript, I'm not doing anything too clever. I'm creating a HTTP request. We're calling the API, getting that data, parsing it with the JSON parser, updating our insult placeholder, and then we're calling the page every one second using this set interval. Job done. Let's see our page in action. And there we are. I hope you found this video useful and that you now have a Umbraco API working and you understand it all. If you want to be an absolute legend, then hit the subscribe button. I would very much appreciate it. If you've got any thoughts, comments, please leave them below. If you want to help me out and you just want to do me a favor, hit the like button. Um, I think the more people that like it, it helps with the YouTube algorithm and more people get to see the video. Otherwise, happy coding.